Good morning guys! Today is another ordinary weekend here in Singapore. For me though, it's quite a special one because exactly a year ago, I officially arrived here after 10 days in quarantine to mark my first year anniversary here. Very cheesy, I know. I decided to make a video to share all my tips and thoughts so far for those of you who are thinking of moving and studying here. I've been getting a lot of questions on my YouTube and Instagram on what to expect living here in Singapore such as rent, daily expenses, budget, job opportunities. So I decided to also make this video to answer all of those questions. So I'll be taking you guys through a day in my life here to share all that I know after one year living in Singapore. The first thing you need when you move to Singapore is of course a place to stay. I was very fortunate enough that when I moved here, my boyfriend has already been living here for the past three years, so he already had prior experience with the rental market. The first thing that might shock you when you arrive in Singapore is the cost of rent, especially now that the rental market is pretty much back to normal, but that doesn't mean that finding a decent home is impossible. It's all about timing and grit. You really have to be patient enough to look for good deals and you also have to be willing to compromise on some areas. So that might mean moving with a roommate or sacrificing on some amenities or living farther away from the central area to be able to get a better deal or a cheaper price for your rent. Usually the minimum rental period is a year. It's very rare that you'll find a landlord or a contract that will allow six months or less. It's a pretty long-term contract. So just keep that in mind when looking for a place. There are two main modes of accommodation here in Singapore. First are condominiums which are privately owned and second HDBs which are publicly owned. For the same location and size, condos are usually more expensive because they typically come with more amenities like gyms and pools and usually are more secure. But prices really depend on several factors such as the location, if the area is a pretty prime area or the place is near a bus stop or a train station. So these are some factors that can also influence the price. I would recommend checking out websites like Property Guru, 99.co or Facebook groups if you're looking for a place to stay. I also recommend that if it's your first time coming here, stay over at a friend or relative's place first or any short-term accommodation that you can find so that you have more time to explore the different areas here to see which areas you vibe with or feel at ease. It's also much better to see a unit in real life because sometimes the photos don't really match the actual condition of the place. So highly recommend that you do a viewing first before you sign any contract. And speaking of contracts, also make sure to do your due diligence in researching and reviewing the agents that you deal with and the contracts that you are about to sign. Scams happen everywhere so make sure that you don't fall for any of them. Heading out for lunch since it's the weekend. One thing we never forget when we head out is a umbrella. <laughs> the weather in Singapore is very unpredictable. Because we always commute, we have to make sure that we are prepared. Like right now, it's so sunny, but later it can be raining really hard. Even Google can't accurately predict the weather here. It has failed us so many times, <laughs> right? So we're gonna head to the MRT now. Typically, we like eating out on weekends to try out new spots that open up. First stop is a cafe that we haven't gone to before. It just newly opened last August.
right now we're here at Home Ground Coffee. It's pretty new. They opened last August and they have a really cool concept because you can actually come here just to try their machines, their beans, all for free. So right now Martin is just getting some coffee equipment. The food scene here in Singapore is bustling and very diverse. There are so many options. Every week, there is a new cafe, bar, or restaurant that opens up. So if you're a foodie like me, you'll never get bored or run out of options. Almost every restaurant here takes their interiors and ambience seriously. So dining out is really an experience. There are a lot of aesthetic and Instagrammable cafes here as well. So you have a lot of photo spot options. It's really fun to cafe hop, but it can also get really expensive. You can easily spend 15 to 30 dollars a meal here in a restaurant or a cafe and even more if you plan to drink so a cocktail easily costs 20 dollars minimum so it's really expensive but at the same time food can also be very affordable it really depends where you go if you eat at the hawker center you can get a meal for only four to five dollars and you'll be really full So I usually take the train or bus to travel because getting a car here is quite expensive like if you book a grab you simply tap your MRT card called EasyLink or any SG issued card even your Apple Watch or your phone if you have linked your card to be able to access both train and bus when I research you can also use foreign issued cards but there's an additional charge between train and bus, I would prefer the train because it's much faster and if you get on the wrong stop, you can always go back easily compared to a bus. So I had a lot of mishaps in riding a bus before, but I guess it's all part of the moving experience. So this is where we're gonna have late lunch. Typically on weekends we eat at a cafe or restaurant because the weather here is really hot. Trying out this cafe called Museum Cafe. They have piranatan or local cuisine so I'm excited to try it because I've been craving for authentic laksa. Let's go! Time check, it's already 2pm and this place is pretty back so I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. This cafe is located actually beside a temple so pretty interesting. I like the interiors, it's very casual but they have a lot of like colorful tiles. I wanted to go here because I wanted to try their take on laksa. It's pretty expensive, it's $13. Usually you can get laksa for as low as $4. I just wanted to try it. Laksa is my favorite Singaporean dish. It's something that I crave for almost every other week. It's just a comforting bowl of goodness. Yeah, no. Super rich. 
rich in flavor, also a lot of toppings, which you typically don't have if you get one in a hawker center. For the ones I've tried, just a tip though, don't wear white like me. I also wish that they already peeled the shrimp because it's quite a hassle. So Martin is peeling our shrimps now. Place around 3.75 out of 5. Martin rates it 4, so I think it's still worth coming down for if you're craving for some laksa and other peranakan dishes. I think on Sunday though they only serve laksa, all the other stuff on the menu were not available. here I was here as a tourist you probably have seen the popular tourist spot here which is the staircase and then you have like a view of the trees from the bottom that the line is really long to get a photo there so we're not heading there because <laughs> I'm done with that spot I'm gonna chill out here one thing I love about Singapore is that you'll never run out of parks everywhere you go you'll find a park wow this park has an escalator wow high tech so nice! Martin was just saying earlier that he wanted an escalator and there it is. your wish has been granted. Wow! It's pretty high. My heels go up. Almost there. Let's go. Where do we go? I think the tree tunnel is the Instagrammable spot so we're not heading there. just chill out here in the park. Going to parks is actually one of my favorite things about Singapore. I really like that even if they're modern and very developed, they have a lot of trees and nature wherever you go. I think that's also one of the reasons why they're very active. They do all sorts of activities like cycling, biking, hiking, and swimming. And I've also adopted that lifestyle since I moved here. So I've been swimming a lot. Martin and I got some foldable bikes. So when it's not too hot, we like to cycle and then chill at the park after. This time, we're just gonna chill here because I wanna chit chat with you guys to share more about my experience as an international student here in Singapore. have to brave the weather because it's quite hot <laughs> but it's worth it another uphill battle in my heels people are doing a picnic here I'm gonna find a vacant spot that's not too hot very chill you can even hear some music
finally settled down, found a spot. It's not too hot here and it's just perfect. I don't have a view but it's just a nice place to chill. The last time Martin and I did this was months ago at East Coast Park which is also a nice place to chill. But this one is more quiet and more relaxing because there's not much people. Let's start our quick chat. I've always loved coming to Singapore as a tourist before because I found it safe, clean and orderly. I think safety is very important especially if you're leaving your home country because most likely you will be all on your own. Getting around here is easy and convenient with their public transport. There are also lots of things to do like visiting museums, parks or going to the beach. Culture and communication wise, I didn't find any issue adjusting. You can easily get around speaking in English although some people talk to me in Chinese. You would probably pick up some local expressions like can and la the longer you stay. Singapore's geographic location is also really great because it's accessible to a lot of countries. Singapore is only a four hour flight away from Manila so you can easily go home or visit your friends and family or have friends or family over. In terms of the quality of education, Singapore is also a global hub for the latest innovations, making it a great learning environment and also a place that can open up a lot of career opportunities for you upon graduation. If you're looking to study abroad, I highly recommend Singapore. If you're interested, you can check out the upcoming virtual event hosted by Singapore Institute of Management this coming November 12 to 19 on the Metaverse where you can learn more about the international student life here. You can get free live consultations with their specialists. You can also win prizes worth $2,000. If you want to know more about the event and sign up, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. More than just getting a global experience, studying abroad is really life-changing. It's a tough decision, it's not easy, but looking back, I have no regrets. I have changed so much. The pandemic really gave me that much needed push to go out of my comfort zone and go after my dreams. So I hope this video inspires you to do so as well and just go after things that scare and excite you at the same time. I have a gallery beside the park that you can check out. Hidden alleys of Singapore. We're currently looking for a cafe. We're here right now at Kurasu Cafe to get Martin's beans. He's gonna use this for a competition. I'm surprised that there's no queue today. Typically on weekends, you can expect that cafes here in Singapore are really packed. If you're looking for a place to eat, you can start by looking where there's a line. I remember Martin and I lined up for one hour for this cafe and it was past lunchtime already. It's kind of crazy, but that's one thing that you can expect here, especially if the restaurant or the cafe is very popular. So my advice before heading to a place, make sure to check reviews on Google or Instagram so that you don't waste your time and money. Also try to make a reservation if the place accepts. For hover centers, I also have a tip. Make sure to bring tissue paper or an ID card to use to reserve a table there because it's quite hard to get a table, especially during peak hours. Are you ready to compete? I think Martin is gonna win. It's nice, huh? I don't typically have this kind of coffee. I just have instant coffee. I'm a simple girl. But this is really good. First thing I taste is sweetness. And there's no bitterness at all. Which I really like. It's not watered down. It's good guys. Try this out. My coffee review. So pathetic. Coffee. Free 
とき。